Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and I know what you're thinking to yourself. Oh, it's Wednesday. What are you doing? It's because Toy Fair weekend is this weekend, so I'll be on a plane Friday for my first trip to New York ever. I'm sure it will be a country mouse in the big city type situation where I'm just overwhelmed and, you know, huddling in a corner somewhere. But new toys? I will get me out of my comfort zone. I got this from Dorkside Toys today. I was going to review it, but I, I'm going to get the weekly out of the way, and then a review tomorrow, and then all the news that will come this weekend. But today, let's talk about a little bit of Marvel Legends. How's that for a change from the last two weeklies? Some amazing Yamaguchi, some Square Enix, some Mezco, uh, some NECA some other things and then some Star Wars Black series. First up on Twitter there's been new pictures of the prototype for the amazing Yamaguchi Carnage. It's always awesome to see prototype pictures. The Carnage is looking great even in all gray. You can tell the sculpt is gonna help hide a bunch of the articulation points. A lot of people don't like Revel Tech because it breaks up the sculpt too much but with Carnage Ooh, oh, that's a lot of striations, that's a lot of muzzle, that's a lot of symbiote, that's a lot of stuff hanging off of it. Your eye isn't going to be drawn to the joints. And then of course you lay the red and the black on top of this, it's going to look fantastic. Also shown were final product pictures for the amazing Yamaguchi Captain America. This should be hitting, uh, what, this week, next week, sometime soon. But I'm really, really liking what I'm seeing here in package and out of package. Does it look like they tweaked the unmasked head a little bit? The older prototype pictures, it, it was kind of plain, kind of, I don't know, funky looking. Here, it's looking much, much better for some reason. Maybe it's the light, maybe it's a different camera, maybe it's pose. I don't know. But, like I said, we should find out very, 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 very soon. NECA has announced that they are re-releasing their quarter-scale Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures. From the sound of it, they're reissuing all four of them in June. Now, I passed on these the first time around, even though they look freaking fantastic, because one would come out, and then you have to wait for the next, and then we waited for the next, and then there was some gap, and they waited for the next, so I talked myself out of it. I had my eye on a Michelangelo that was at my Toys R Us, and then the closing down 10% sale hit, and somebody just picked it up, bought it right out from under me. Right, I say right out from under me. It's not like I hid it or anything. It was just right there on the shelf. And somebody came along, oh, Michelangelo grabbed it. And then I came a couple days later and went, can't win. But reissuing all of them at the same time, all four of them, it's going to be tempting. I mean, look at this picture. You would think that's a movie still, but it's not. It's the actual figures. Now, speaking of freaky deaky pictures from NECA, they also released pretty promotional shots of their 7-inch scale Crash Bandicoot. Oh, my God. I don't know what it is about this figure. I have no attachment to Crash whatsoever. No clue. I know he's a video game character. That's about it. I'm more of a gun sandbox top guy. But looking at these pictures, my brain, I see the joints, I see the articulation, but I'm thinking animation cell. It's just that good. The sculpt is fantastic. The paint job. The joints look a little bit hindered, especially in the ankles, and it looks to get about 90 in the elbow, but I don't even care. Articulated eyebrows. It's insane. Looking back at my old nose. I forgot what month it releases. This releases in May. And I probably should have looked this up, but I, I do believe it's around the $20 price point. Square Enix has announced a couple of new figures for their Bring Arts line. I don't have anything from the Bring Arts line. I have the Near Automata figures on pre-order. Excited about those. They look great. But the more they put out, the more I want to try it out, even though I have no attachment to the properties. You see the theme when it comes to video game characters? I'm pretty much... Never played the game, but it looks great. They did release a Sora, which I've heard beautiful things about. But they've also announced a Kingdom Hearts 3 Riku, a Kingdom Hearts 2 Christmas Town version of Sora, and then a Kingdom Hearts 2 Halloween Town version of Sora. Just the colors and the build and the articulation on these, like, I don't know. They look great. And then they've also shown the prototypes for Xenogears Ellie and Faye. Again, no clue, but man, you make a good toy. I, I, I will at least listen to someone talk about how good it is when they get it. And if they like it enough, I may get this too. Storm Collectibles King of Fighters 98 Omega Rugal. I have no idea. I don't even remember what I was doing in 98. But I do have experience with Storm Collectibles, and they build a hell of an action figure. This is probably going to be par for the course. Same situation great build quality, 
awesome articulation, nice paints. So if you're a fan of King of Fighters, there you go. Mezco is still ramping up for Toy Fair, which again, it's this weekend, by showing a couple more teases for more 112 Collective figures. And the first one would be John Wick. I've seen the movie. Yeah, it's cool. I never felt the need to have an action figure. I've seen a lot of customs out there, and I know a lot of people are excited for John Wick action figures. Coming out in the 112 Collective line, Mm, yeah, I, that's probably enough to get me to buy it, too. And finish watching the second movie. And then there is the Sovereign Knight Batman. Now, this continues Mesco's line of their own designs. They have a young, starting out Batman with the Ascending Knight Batman. They have this one at the height of Batman's career where he's all teched up, has all his gear ready. He's rolling. He's just, you know, out there fighting crime. And then I guess the third one will be Old Man Batman, where he's worn down and, you know, things are about to come to an end. Now, this figure, it looks great. I've always wanted the Batman vs. Superman Batman, but this is almost enough to make me quit looking for a good price on that one. I feel it kind of follows the same aesthetics. It has the same great detail to the undersuit. It's got the black bat. I know a lot of people are hoping for an oval version with the yellow or this in blue, which wouldn't surprise me at all. They have the Ascending Knight in blue. They should do the same thing here. Of course, they should release the Ascending Knight before moving on to Sovereign Knight. But what do I know? I can grab all I want, but in the long run, I'm still throwing my money out there and hoping for plastic sometime in the near future. Now, they did hint at the accessories this may come with. I'm really hoping for an unmasked head, but what they actually listed were uh, batarangs, grappling gun, sonic disruptor, bat drone, and then kryptonite knuckle dusters. So yeah, he's ready to take on the freaking world here. We'll probably see more of both of these at Toy Fair this weekend. Not really toy related, but possibly toy related. It actually adds to my wish list of figures that may be pushed to the forefront because of the Deadpool 2 movie. Most people are speculating that that's Zeitgeist from X-Force slash Ecstatics. He has the yellow mask thing dilly over his face so it's got to be zeitgeist right and that for me gives me hope that we'll see some kind of figure of ecstatics in the future because i was scrolling through twitter and then i came across this which could it possibly be i i think it's either bishop or bridge it's got to be but if that's the anarchist that's two ecstatics characters that could get a little bit more coverage you know in the toys or in the comic or something i don't know yeah dead i know but still, I also would like to see Dupe somewhere in this movie, which would bring it all the way back around to that Marvel Legends Series 6 Deadpool that came with the Dupe figure. See how I tied that in? Freaking genius, man. But keeping with the Marvel theme, uh, leaked pictures of the Marvel Legends Replica Infinity Gauntlet leaked this week. And I don't do a lot of props. In fact, my son and daughter have more Marvel props than I do. But this, this is looking cool. Now the Infinity Gems light up. Your hand is inside the palm of it. And then you have the fingers in the loops where you pull it and the fingers move. We've all seen those for years and years and years. But there's also sounds when the fingers move. Hopefully there's an option to turn that off because I don't, I mean, creaky fingers? And then of course you have the chance to give the bird just like Thanos does. He gives the bird half the universe dies. That probably won't happen whenever you're doing it. It'll probably just break your mama's heart. We also saw pictures of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the first 10 years Marvel Legends figures. First up, there's an Iron Man Mark 7 from the Avengers. Now, as you can see, proportions look good. Sculpt looks good. It has opening flaps on the back. And it's also listed to have premium articulation, which I think they list all Marvel Legends as having. But here I'm hoping for some extra stuff. It was brought up on the forums that the hips may drop down. If you look, you can kind of see one hip is a little bit lower than the other, but it's also more forward than the other. So who knows until we actually see, well, probably until we get the actual figures in our hands. It's also listed as number three in the series. So there's two before that we don't even know about. And then moving all the way up to number nine would be the Captain America Civil War two pack with Captain America and crossbones. I'm really, really digging this. At first I was like, I am not buying another goddamn Captain America. But then I started looking at it, and yeah, it may be the same body that we've bought a couple times before, but the face printing tech on the unmasked head probably makes it the best looking Evans we've seen so far. And I think they did the same for the masked head too. If you look there, there's a lot of detail to the eyes. The skin tone looks really nice, so hopefully 
they did their magic there too. Get over to Crossbones, and I like this. He's big, he's bulky, but he looks basic for some reason. The paint job looks good. The white paint on the helmet, on the chest, and then of course the face printing tech on the unmasked head with the scars, everything else. I, yeah, I'm down for that too. But you get to the articulation on the body and it looks like you know, the cheapy toys at Walmart. The silhouette isn't quite as nice as the Captain America figure right beside it. It's kind of chunky, it's kind of rough, but in the action shot, a lot of that goes away because, you know, being posed, it's not quite as mannequin-esque. Mannequin-esque. <laughs> now, Iron Man is listed for about $25, which seems like a jump in price. Is it just for this, the first 10 years series? Or is that going to be the new price for Marvel Legends going on? And then the two-pack is around $50. It's not exclusive, I don't think. I think that we'll see this at online retailers. Plus, that may just be the suggested retail price, even though these were from the Walmart computer. And then finally, I've been asking for some Star Wars Black Series news. Today, we get some Star Wars Black Series news. And I'm pretty happy. It's not classic stuff, but... Star Wars figures are Star Wars figures. That would be the first four six-inch figures revealed for Solo, A Star Wars Story. Han's looking pretty good. My brain needs to go away from Harrison Ford a little bit. I was okay with it in the new Star Trek movies. I'm probably going to be okay with it here. It's just that I, my brain has to do that switch. I'm liking the blue color of the pants against the brown color of the jacket. I see this and it more than likely will be on the shelf as a young Han, but I also see this as great fodder for a ceremony Luke. You put a Luke head on it, you get some yellow paint on the jacket, uh, you get that comic book look that I've been wanting for a long time. And then it looks like they'll be putting the face printing tech on a lot of the figures. It, it's looking good here. And I know this is a promotional shot, so it'll probably look different in person. We'll just have to wait and see. Now Kira, I hope I pronounced that right. Kira? Or Kira? Kira? I don't know. She's looking a bit generic. I would have liked to have seen the other look for her, but I'm okay with this too. Fur seems to be the theme of the movie. I don't know. But I'm liking the haircut here. And again, the face looking fantastic. The Range Trooper continues the fur theme. Having a lot of fur up here. It, the jacket is lined with it. I, I, my, I don't know. It just seems weird to me that somebody would put a jacket on and then put armor over that. I don't know. And then the boots really throw me. I, first, I don't think there's any articulation down there, or they would have the feet flat-footed. So even if there's a hinge of some kind in the ankle, I'm not seeing any kind of tilt to it. Or maybe those come off and he's just got standard boots underneath. Doesn't look like there's room for that, but a boy can hope. The bottom of the jacket being plastic looks like it's going to hinder the legs a lot. I, it just seems really, really bulky. And then the helmet looking very tank driver slash scarif from Rogue One. I dig that design, but it's throwing me off here. Only because I guess this is a new design. I really like the look of the soft goods fur. I'm pretty sure that's soft goods fur around the neck. And it gives me a lot of hope for a Gamorrean guard for his lower skirt piece. Because a year and a half from Solo... On to the next Star Wars movie. That's a lot of time to throw some original trilogy characters out there, Hasbro. No. I don't know. I just get a Stormtrooper slash Winter Rodeo Clown vibe from this. I need to see it in actual action, and then I need to have this in my hand to see how much range of movement it actually has. And then the figure I've already deemed my favorite of this wave would be Lando. He didn't even say anything in the trailer, and I'm already invested in Donald Glover as Lando. Totally good with it. He just throws off that young Billy D. Williams vibe. The figure looks a little busy with the scarf piece coming down and it hanging all in the way. If, if that's removable, I'm probably getting rid of that. The cape is very Empire Strikes Back, but especially the face. He's got the eyebrow raised a little bit. He's got a little bit of cockiness there. I kind of feel like up to the, at least this point, this may be the best looking face we've seen on a Black Series figure yet. But he better use Han. Han, old buddy, or I'm boycotting the whole movie. A lot of people have their, you know, hang-ups with the various Star Wars movies we've seen lately. My biggest hang-up would be <laughs> Lando mispronouncing Han's name intentionally. I don't know, but I have a lot of faith in Dom Lover. And that's it for this week. Lots and lots of news and more to come that just this weekend we're going to be inundated. Because I think Wonder Festival overseas is also happening this weekend too. We'll probably get back from New York and then have to tr backtrack to all the stuff that was revealed over there. Now just to touch on a subject uh, about the comment section actually. And if you're in the comment section and you're making comments about me, 
That's fine. I'll go a whole thread talking shit about myself. You can talk about the toys all you want. That's fine too. But you start shit in the comment section just for the sake of being a hateful asshole? Uh uh, I have one rule. Don't be a hateful asshole. And if you had a run in with this douche in the past week and now he's gone, you know what I mean. Everybody knows I try to reply on the comments. Yes, it's fun getting up here and making videos and blah, 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 blah. But back and forth in the comment section, that's fun. I, I enjoy that. But I ain't putting up with bullshit. Not on this channel, Bubba. I don't care if you're a Guns N' Roses fan or not. So you know who I'm talking about. But to the rest of you, oh, happy Valentine's Day. Mwah, I love you all. So if you like this Foosh Weekly, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the Foosh.